Okay, I'm here to uh, talk a little bit about um, basically um, playing over a 12 bar blues. So, this is kind of a lesson for um, um, intermediate um, players that have kind of got stuck into um, <clears throat> a bit of a, you know, um, stuck in a kind of the pentatonic kind of world and uh, want to kind of break out of that and uh, play something a bit more. Um, Play some more um, notes from the harmony, um, as opposed to just playing one scale across the entire 12-bar blues. Um, so, the first thing you're going to need to know is um, probably um, three arpeggios, and then um, of each of those arpeggios, you need to really know them in at least um, at least two or three different positions. So, the first arpeggio I'm going to show you, we're playing a G blues. Um, um, three chords G7, C7 and D7 so we've got the, the first chord which is, which is a um, G7 chord the second chord is a C7 or we're playing a C9 here and the third chord is a D9 okay so the arpeggio pattern the first one we want to learn for the G7 I'm going to put my third finger on the D string, the fifth fret um, then I'm going to Proceed, put my um, second finger on the G string, fourth fret. My first finger goes on the B string, third fret. And to complete the arpeggio, we're going to play um, the fourth finger on the B string, sixth fret. So we've got this, this is the entire arpeggio. And these are the notes basically G, which is the root of the chord. Then we've got a B, which is the third of the chord. We've got a D, which is the um, fifth of the chord. And this is the, the flat seven um, interval, and this is a G, um, F. Okay, so there are four um, notes in the G7 chord. So really, when you're playing an arpeggio, it's just like playing the chord, but in a kind of scale format individual note. Okay, we can also play that same arpeggio here, starting on the E string. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to use my second finger this time on the E string. Um, on the E string, third fret. And then my first finger goes on the A string, second fret. Um, then I'm going to put my fourth finger on the fifth fret. I'll show you a few variations of this in a minute. Then I'm going to put my second finger on the third fret D string. Okay, so that's my that's a, still a G7 on page. It's still the same notes. We've got G, B, D, and F, but just in a different position. So if I play that, you see it's the same as this. Okay, so um, what we can do, we can also join those two arpeggio shapes up. I'm changing the fingering slightly here just to make it a bit more easier. So I'm going second finger, first finger, then I'll play my third finger, first finger there on the D string, uh, third fret, and then third finger on the fifth fret, and I'll come down here. Okay, so that's the, the first up here, which goes G7 chord. Okay, um, well, let's learn the uh, the next two arpeggios for the C um, dominant chord. Okay, so this is basically the same as that arpeggio starting here on the E string, but we're going to transfer it down here now to the C, the C note here on the A string. Use my second finger, third fret, first finger here on the D string, second um, fret. Uh, the fourth finger is on the fifth fret D string. And then my second finger here goes on the G string, third fret. Okay, so that's our first position of the C7 arpeggio. We can also do, in a higher register, a, still a C7 arpeggio. We can start here with my third finger on the G string, fifth fret. Then I'm going to play here on the B string, fifth fret as well. And then first finger on the E string, third fret. 
and the fourth finger there on the E string, sixth fret. Okay, so that's. You can see I'm kind of barring there with my third finger on across the G and the B strings. Same deal with this chord, I can. I can kind of join them both up. So. Again, I'm using my third finger there. When I show you the arpeggio, I use my fourth finger. But um, if I'm going to join these two arpeggios up, I'm going to use my third finger here on the D string, fifth fret. Okay, so to get the the third chord, the third dominant chord in the uh, 12 bar in G, the D7, basically I'm going to play the same as I just did here. I'm just going to shift it up two frets. So the notes of the C7 arpeggio, which we didn't go through, are basically C, E, the E is a major third, G is a fifth, then we've got B flat, which is a flat seven, to a C. Um, okay, so to spell out the D7 arpeggio, we've got a D, then we've got a, an F sharp here, um, which is a major third, we've got an A note, which is Fifth. We've got a C there, which is a flat seven, and that's the D. If you're confused about the flat seven, um, because they're all major intervals except the, the seventh note is flatter. So if I was playing a, a D major seven arpeggio, I would play there C sharp. But on the D seven arpeggio, a dominant chord, I play a D natural. Okay, so basically. What we can do is you can. I'm going to now play you the backing track I just recorded with just these arpeggio shapes. I'm not going to use anything else, just these arpeggio shapes so you can hear what that sounds like. So here we go. quite hard actually to do because um, I kept wanting to go to other notes. I think I did go to a few notes that weren't in the arpeggio be just because of you know when you're improvising you want to kind of do things naturally but I was just trying to keep to those arpeggio notes there and you can kind of see that it really I'm spelling out those chords as they're going past and it makes the solo I think a lot more melodic. So now what I'm going to do I'm going to put the pentatonic scale in um, and, and uh, I'm going to try and mix that together there. Um, one thing with the um, Pentatonic scale, there's a few little tricks you can do here. Um, obviously, we've got the blue scale, which is. So, for the basic um, pentatonic shape, I'm just going to add there the flat five. In the case of um, a G, it's a D flat instead of a D note. So, one D flat there. But we can also. Um, we can add what's called a major six, which is basically an E, and this is really nice. It kind of sweetens up the sound a bit. So, if I'm doing this, um, the basic pentatonic shape with that six instead of the flat seven, the flat seven's here. I'm going to replace it with the major major six, um, which is on the second fret D string. So I'm going to go. Just gives it a bit of a sweeter sound. I can also add that major six to the um, the arpeggio. Um, and then, so that's one um, interval which is quite nice. Another interview interval uh, is um, the ninth. Okay. Um, in this case, it's an A note, A natural. Um, so again, we can. So 
and getting into the BB King territory, BB King box there, um, with the, the ninth and the, and the sixth. So we can add these as well to the arpeggio. So you start to build up quite a kind of um, database there of notes that you, and possibilities that you can use over the blues. So let's just kind of put all this together and see what happens. Here we go. Oops. Okay, so basically um, that was kind of using those extra notes in there. Now obviously if you work out these, these patterns, you can kind of work them out in a few different positions. Then you're going to start to open up your fretboard there. Um, and uh, you're going to kind of expand your kind of fretboard knowledge just with these basic arpeggios, you know, and it's going to give you kind of a, a motivation to, to work out different positions. Um, now, uh, one last thing, um, there's a few other little tricks that I want to point out here. You can use, when we come to the D, D9 chord, basically you can play straight out of this box here. So that's the kind of blues box up at the 10th uh, fret, you can even play the, the, um, the kind of minor third there which is an F, F natural going to an F sharp, it's going to sound great. When you come over to the C chord however, you really want to be playing. I just tend to play the, um, the, the, um, the major third, and this is kind of a trick I learned from Robin Ford. Basically just play the, in this case, the E natural. So, if we just do that turn around. So I sound like this when I'm playing. So that just makes it. Just makes it kind of a bit more fluid there, um, but um, so just keep in mind the, the use of the arpeggios, not just playing out of basic scales. And I think that's going to really expand and uh, make your um, your solos a bit more interesting over the 12-bar blues. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out this video.